So what did we discuss in our last lecture? Yeah, we well, uh, have derived the lower bound for uh, the regret, right? For any algorithm, we have showed, shown that it will incur at least root e regret. Like if you have k arms, so the actual theorem is root kt. We have taken a two arm case and we have proved that. So maybe the k arm case uh, will be very similar. Maybe I'll give it as an exercise. You can try that. If you read the two arm case carefully, if you make some minor modifications to that, you will get the K M K. So mainly we have used, uh, we have created two environments uh, which are uh, very similar uh, because the delta was very low. But uh, we have uh, made sure that the best term in one case is the worst term in the other case. Uh, for delta very small, uh, it is very likely to see similar samples in both the environments. So if uh, you see same same samples, uh, you will play similarly, right? Because whatever you play depends on what you see, right? You don't know the true means, right? What? How do you play uh, the arms? You play that. You play the arms based on what samples you have seen. If the samples that you are seeing are very similar in both the environments, you will end up playing uh, same number of arms, uh, like every arm, same uh, mostly the same number of times in both the environments. So since in one environment, the best term is the worst term in the other environment, with some uh, probability that uh, you will have a bad event in both the environment, at least one of these environments. So if you do well in the first environment, uh, there is a chance that you do bad in the second environment. We have created such two environments and we have used the BH inequality. Uh, what was the BH inequality giving us? It was giving us uh, like probability of A plus A plus Q of A complement is greater than or equal to uh, half times the uh, edge of KL divergence, right? So we have used that inequality to show that uh, the bad event will occur at least uh, with some probability. And we have related the bad event uh, to the expected uh, regret. The bad event was playing the bad arm uh, some number of times. We were able to relate that to the expected regret. So we were able to get some bound on the lower bound on the expected regret. So I'm not going into to uh, to go to show all this, but that's how we have derived. Okay. So that was what uh, we have discussed in the last lecture, and in today's lecture. Let's lecture one to three We'll uh, discuss another class of uh, popular algorithms called Thomson sampling. So, and we'll not go into the regret analysis of this algorithm, but we'll just uh, give you uh, an in. Uh, uh, we'll just describe the algorithm. What is Thomson sampling and how is it different from the other algorithm we have seen? We have seen ETC and UCB, right? So we'll just see how is this different from uh, the other uh, two algorithms. And then, uh, uh, if time permits, we'll look at something called policy gradient algorithms. And so this policy gradient algorithm is... Uh, uh, large class of algorithms, uh, which uh, is widely used in uh, not just the banded uh, setup, but in the full RL setup as well. Like a lot of uh, algorithms which are practically used in reinforcement learning uh, are some variants of policy gradient algorithms. Okay. And one more concept which we would be interested in looking at is called contextual bandits, which is like... Uh, so one step between the bandits and the full RL setup. In the full RL setup, we have multiple states, right? In bandits, we had only one state. And one more uh, difference was in the bandits, uh, the next state is not dependent on the current state. There is no time correlation. Whatever you do now, you will get a reward immediately. What you do in the next slot 
has nothing to do with what you have done in the previous slot like if you take whatever action you take you get the immediate reward and there is no correlation across there is no effect of that action over the next step uh so that property will still be true in this contextual bandwidth like there won't be any time correlation but uh, you will have multiple states so you will still have if you take an action you get an immediate reward and there won't be any effect of that in the next uh, time slots but there will be multiple states you can think of it as a bandwidth with multiple states okay so these are the three topics uh, i want to cover i will see how many of them i can cover today uh, if uh, there is something left we'll cover in the next class so if you look at uh, the etc algorithm uh, what uh, the main principle was you just try each arm for some number of time and uh, to just calculate the sample average right so based on the sample average of all the uh, arms you just decide which arm to play for the rest of the time right so this decision is based on some point estimate of the true mean right you just get one estimate of the true mean after some uh, exploration so and just based on that average estimate you got you take the decision right so that is based on a point estimate so we just uh, try to uh, we want to estimate the true mean based on some uh, sample average right we want we don't know the true mean we just get some sample estimate of the true mean and just decide based on that that was the etc algorithm then uh, we had ucb algorithm where you just don't rely on the sample estimate because uh, uh, the mu bar of a is not actually equal to mu of a right there could be some uh, variation in that right so in um, ucb in instead of just looking at the sample estimate what did we do what was our decisions based on is it just based on the sample estimate so instead of just relying on the sample estimate it's like we relied on uh, the estimate plus some uh, variance right roughly uh, picking instead of just looking at uh, what is the sample average you also look at uh, some how con what is the confidence interval that we have right we we calculated something like this like mu bar of a minus epsilon to mu bar of a plus epsilon so you can think of the epsilon as uh, somewhat like a variance like how much or some as uh, some uh, estimate which is telling you within uh, how much uh, you are confident about we are saying that we are confident that the mu of a will lie within this interval with a high confidence high probability right so this is like uh, if you think of uh, if i want to just give an analogy so whenever uh, some quiz or mocks uh, say mid sem mocks are released you will be asking what is the class average right so the first algorithm is like just asking what is the class average so but uh, you want to stop with that right then what will you ask after the class average you will ask the standard deviation right so the second algorithm is somewhat like that so i should just don't look at the average but look at the standard deviation as well maybe epsilon t is some function of is somewhat related to standard d and um, maybe what else you could have asked if i have given you more freedom to ask not just class average and standard deviation you can't ask me to give the list of all the marks with the names that is confidential so what else you can ask here could have asked a histogram right like from uh, 10 to 20 how many people have got from 20 to 30 how many people have got right so you could have asked me a, a, a probability distribution okay okay how many people have got in this range how many people have got in this range so that will give you a even better uh, information than this right the standard deviation right because you know precisely 
what how the mox distribution is how many people are closer to the average how many people are far from the average and you have a better information so thomson sampling will somewhat do like that so instead of just looking at a sample estimate or just looking at variance it will try to uh, keep track of uh, because in this uh, from uh, mu a minus epsilon to mu a plus epsilon, it lies with high probability. I'm not telling, even within this, uh, some values could be more probable, right? Like maybe mu a minus epsilon by two to mu a plus epsilon by two is more probable than uh, the remaining endpoints, right? If like in this range, it might be more probable than in this range, right? So instead of just looking at it as a sample, uh, a confidence interval, you could uh, try to maintain uh, a histogram kind of a thing, which is telling like uh, for every set of marks, what is the probability or how many, roughly how many students are there for each year marks. So this is confidence interval. And this is like you try to maintain a probability distribution. So it's like, what is the probability that uh, my mu, my true mean is equal to some theta? So I'll try to maintain this uh, function, which is like, what is the, huh? Yeah. In Thomson sampling, we'll try to maintain a probability distribution after some our uh, time, like initially, maybe we do not know anything about the true mean, right? Let's say you haven't played anything till now. What will be your, uh, let's say you know that the uh, uh, range of the random variables is between zero and one. Then what? what is the only information that you know? You know that the true mean belongs to zero to one. That's the only information you know. So maybe initially you'll just uh, think like the, if I ask you what is the probability or what is, the confidence that you have about the true mean, then you will just say, maybe it's like a uniform distribution between uh, zero to one. Like this is the values that mu of a can take. These are the values that mu of a can take. And you are just asking what is the probability that the mu of a equal to zero, theta. So you can, all these are, we can vary these based on the time, right? How much after how many rounds we can keep varying these things, right? This could be one before the start of the game. If I ask you, uh, what is the uh, what is what is your belief about the true mean? I'll just say that everything is equally likely. I don't know much, right? But after seeing some samples, after seeing some samples, uh, I will be able to update my like in this terminology, this is called as belief about the true mean. So if I see some samples, I'll be able to update my uh, distribution, right? So if I see, let's say it's a Bernoulli bandit, if I see more and more ones, then my uh, distribution will change, right? So instead of being flat, let's say after some uh, 10 rounds, let's say I've seen uh, most of that time uh, ones and few times zeros then my distribution might change something like this. Right closer to theta equal to one, I'll say I'm more content. So this could be mu zero at time t equal to zero. This is what I think about the true mean. But let's say after some, uh, let's say t slots, I would have got some samples about each arm. So based on that samples, let's say I got a lot of ones. Then I can uh, change my uh, belief, right? Then if I get a lot of ones, let's say it's a Bernoulli band, either zero or one. Let's say the rewards are either zero or one. So let's say you got more ones than zeros. Then your belief might change. The probability will decrease. Closer towards one, your probability will increase. Is it understandable? Because you're you're changing your belief about what the true mean is. 
So how do we do it in a systematic way is what this is not the distribution of reward. This is about what you think about the true mean. So this is what yeah mean is because we are assuming the um, means are the random variables are bounded between 0 and 1 so the true mean will be between 0 and 1 so in the beginning we don't have anything about the true mean you are assuming the true mean is not the reward. It's not the reward. It's the mean. The true mean of the reward, which we do not know. Before the start of the game, it seems that we do not know anything about the true mean. We are just saying the true mean can take any value between 0 and 1 with equal probability. Then, after some samples, we will be able to change our belief on about the true mean. This is not the reward distribution. It is a, this is the belief that we have on the true mean. So this is a distribution on the true mean because it's uh, because we do not know the true mean exactly. We are just trying to characterize the true mean. As number of samples increases, the true mean belief will concentrate and it will become something like this, like an impulse, right? With very high probability, it will concentrate on. Uh, one particular value. Let's say you have a lot of samples, then by large law of, laws of large numbers, you will know that uh, the sample average will become very close to the true mean, right? So then if you have a lot of samples, your belief about the true mean will concentrate around some particular value. Maybe after a lot of uh, trials, maybe the true mean will look something like this. Maybe it will concentrate some particular value. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Like the the this this is not the probability. This is you can think of it as a PDF, not as a probability. The PDF can be more than one, right? So I did not want it to use that one, but you can think of this as a PDF. Let's say the for a uniform distribution between zero and half, uh, the PDF will look something like this, right? For a uniform distribution between zero and half, this will be the PDF. Because the area should be one under the PDF. Yeah. Can you can you be louder? No, the area of posterior will be one because it's a valid probability distribution. The the p and the uh, width will keep decreasing and the height will increase. Is this concept clear? Before I go into the further details, roughly you understood what I mean. As you see more and more samples, uh, your belief about the true mean changes. And if you see a lot of samples, your uh, belief about the true mean will concentrate around some particular value, which is closer to the actual true mean. Okay. So. So at any point of time, Based on whatever samples you have seen about that particular arm, you can have one such belief for each arm, right? For every arm, the true mean will be something different, right? So for every arm, you'll have some distribution like this. Okay, for arm one, what is my belief about the true mean? For arm two, what is my belief about the true mean? Right? Just like how we have a sample. Like distribution uh, for each uh, true mean okay instead of mu bar of mu bar t of a we have uh, pt mu of a equal to theta okay so at some point in time let's say every arm has some uh, true mean distribution 
what will you uh, do what arm would you like to play no every arm will have some property on the between 0 and 1 the two means so every arm will have some distribution like this let's say this is one of the so how do you measure that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one way to do that is uh, let's say you were uh, uh, what do you say? So, so you want uh, you want to play the arm which has the uh, higher true mean, right? That's what you want. So, at any point of time, can we calculate this probability that what is the probability that the true mean of arm A is greater than the true mean of arm B. If you let's say you want to calculate this. Okay. So at the time, we have to some true mean, right? So let's say arm So for arm A, there will be some true mean distribution. For arm B, there will be some true mean distributions. Now, uh, instead of being greedy and just uh, uh, play one particular arm, what Thompson sampling does is it will try to uh, use a randomized policy, which is uh, if, let's say, uh, because it's not very clear. Yeah. 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 Because it's just a probability, right? And there is a probability that, uh, because this, these are not perfect uh, room in distribution, because we are just guessing these things, right? Based on whatever samples we are seeing. Because if these were perfect, then we could have always played the sample. We don't have to do any exploration. Correct? If our samples, we rely totally on the samples, then we need not do all this. We just calculate mu bar t of a and play the arm with the highest mu bar t of a. So we need some exploration, right? Because we cannot clearly tell which is the best arm based on a few samples. So what we'll do is, so uh, there is some probability uh, for each arm to be the best arm, right? Still, although this is, this is the, just if there is some probability that A can be best arm, there could be some probability with which the B could be the best arm. Okay. So we just try to calculate this probability. We are doing this, we will play arm A with this much probability in that time slot. We'll just throw a, uh, we'll just do a randomized algorithm. In any given time slot T, you play arm A with this much probability, arm B with the remaining probability, which is, what is the probability that your arm A is the best arm? We'll calculate that. What is the probability that your arm B is the best arm? Then based on those two, we just uh, play, let's say this turns out to be, Let's say two by three, and let's say the other one turns out to be one by three. Then we'll play, we'll toss a coin. If it lands in right, okay. if it toss a coin, okay. if it lands in right, if it lands in right, arm. Is the algorithm clear at a high level? Now the question is, how do we compute these probabilities? We know these two. You can think of it like this. Let's say you have P of H, which is a probability distribution of some random variable. And you have P of Y, which is a distribution about Y. How, how can we calculate this probability? Okay, so one uh, one simple, uh, like you can do some calculations as you said, instead of that there is a very simple algorithm, which is like, 
you have some uh, distribution on x you have some distribution on y you want to uh, play uh, one particular thing first problem right so what you can do is you know this distribution right you just sample some you just sample from this and you are doing one sample from this distribution and play uh, the first term if the sample is greater than the other sample so you sample some h tilde from this distribution you have a distribution you just sample one one real we just take one realization from the distribution then you just take another realization from this distribution how you play the first term if if this is true you play arm one and if this is true you play arm two so let's say p of h is the true mean belief of arm one arm two right so this is the true mean belief of arm one this is the true mean belief of arm two now so you get two numbers now you are looking at those numbers and seeing if uh, the first number is greater you play arm one you play the second arm if the second number is greater now this is a random quantities right so with what probability are you playing arm one what is the probability that h tilde will be greater than y tilde probability when will h tilde be greater than y tilde this is the probability of h tilde is greater than y tilde is nothing but probability h greater than y right because you took one sample from this you took one sample from this we are asking what is the probability that h tilde is greater than y tilde so whenever that is true you are playing arm one so that means with what probability are you playing arm one you are playing the arm one with probability h greater than y that is one way to do right You just take one sample from this, take one sample from this, take one sample from this. Then you are playing arm one with this one sample. Huh? That will represent a sample realization of the true mean. So this is a true mean distribution. No, it can be anything. But the probability, because it's more concentrated around the true mean, right? So if you take a random sample, the probability that it will come on the extremes will be less. The probability that it will come around the true mean will be more. So we are just, uh, we don't want to greedily uh, pick the arm with the highest mean. If you want to do greedy, what you can do? You have the probability. <laughs> expectations of those probability distribution which are the highest expectation you play the term for that you don't even need to calculate these things you could have simply that you could have played out the sample estimate is the algorithm clear or are there any doubts roughly i'm just telling it at a very high level so that you understand the details because you know that You don't know exactly what is the true mean, so you want you don't want to be greedy. If you want to be greedy, what is it? Ah, so then you play the second round. That is like a greedy approach. Is this? That that would have been similar as playing uh, mute the arm with the highest true mean uh, estimate, arm with the highest sample mean estimate. But that's not what we want. We want to have some exploration as well, right? So for that, what we are doing is we are uh, trying to sample one. Uh, one thing, not the thing of that arm. We are just seeing if the sample of the first distribution or the sample of the second distribution. Yeah. 
if it is the other way, we play the off way. And uh, the property can happen. Uh, the different of is the Okay. What is the probability that h is greater than y? It will depend on that. So if we are very confident about some particular arm, then the probability that let's say your your true means are like this, like say the true mean distributions of two arms are like this. So let's say around let's say this is like three by four. Then if you take a sample from this distribution. So the property that is the second term, this event will happen in the property. This is what will happen with more property. That is with more probability you play arm two. Okay. So as uh, your sample increases, the sample number of samples increases, both the arms will concentrate around some particular uh, values and uh, you will very less likely the probability that you'll make mistake will keep decreasing with time okay is this clear i'll come to that so before i go into the specific details of the algorithm are there any doubts at this level No, we are not saying we'll avoid the uh, best term, right? We are just saying we are keeping some scope for exploration, right? If even if this there is a problem, this term can be here, and this term can be here. So, with some probability, you are exploring. Although, if you do greedily, you will always play the second term there. But if you do this, at least in some times, it could be possible that x in the index is y in y. Because it could, by chance, it could be x in the index of y. So, from chance, it could be x in the index of y. And it could be x in the index of y. And it could be x in the index of y. That means which arm you play at that time? You will play the first arm. That means, although the probability of that happening is low, Sometimes it will happen. So that sometimes you are doing exploration. Initially, all the arms will have uh, like uniform distribution. As the samples come, they will concentrate around some value. So that's what we want, right? Like initially, you want to explore all the arms, right? No, initial steps you want more exploration. No, initial later you can be a little bit greedy because initially you don't know anything about the arms. You want to do some exploration, right? Like even if all the other algorithms are like that, right? ETC, what are we doing? We are reserving some number of slots and we are exploring all the arms. In UCB also, what are we doing? In UCB, we are playing new T bar of A plus something. But that something will depend on what? It's like root log t by nt of a. So when, uh, let's say, nt of a was uh, 1, that means you have a very large deviation, right? Root log t, you are having a very large. But as number of samples is there will be some. So initially, you will try to do more exploration. But as time progresses, you will try to do more exploitation. Okay. Any other doubts at this point? Yes. Huh, definitely better than greedy. Actually, you can do the this regret is similar to UCB request. Okay. Any other questions? Okay.
so now let's see how do we calculate this distribution because at every after every sample we have to update our belief about the true mean right initially let's say all the true means are like uh, between 0 and 1 like uniform distribution but after every sample about an arm we have to change our true mean distribution we know how to change the sample average we just average uh, with one more sample you got you just take the average again it's very easy here we have to see how exactly are we maintaining that uh, distribution for every new sample you have to change our distribution right for every arm so what we'll do is we'll look at a special case uh, and then uh, show uh, how the calculations will look so what we'll take is uh, we'll assume that the arms are bernoulli rewards bernoulli arm rewards okay and we also so this is uh, technically speaking whatever we are uh, before the start of the experiment whatever beliefs we have this is called as a prior distribution okay so because we don't have any samples this is what we believe even before playing so this is called prior distribution and whatever we are computing after getting some samples we call that as a posterior distribution okay so we have some prior we get some data we update the prior to get a posterior distribution okay so what uh, special case we'll take is we'll take the bernoulli arm rewards and we'll assume there is uh, the prior belongs to a distribution called beta distribution thomson sampling for bernoulli arms reward with uh, beta prayer okay i'll tell you what beta prayer is yeah if you know that the arms are bernoulli uh, rewards then we can do this calculation okay so maybe before i describe the actual algorithm so let's uh, let's do a small calculation to get a feel of this so let's say uh, we can take our prior as uniform between 0 and 1 right for some particular arm for every arm let's say we take this prior prior is a distribution of the true mean that we think the belief that we have before the start of the game so before you have any samples you can think the prior is a uniform distribution or if you have some prior information let's say let's say this is a, about a lottery mission which you are going to and uh, let's say your friends have played for some time then you can ask okay are we getting more rewards or less rewards then your prior may be something else if you have some prior information then you can incorporate that here if you don't know anything you can just assume it's uniform between zero and one okay or if you have some prior information based on your friends or someone else who has played that before then you can incorporate that into your prior distribution okay so you have this prior distribution let's say for some particular arm let's say you have played it three times and let's say this is the data that you have seen like let's say you got uh, two times one and one time zero uh, rewards uh, after uh, playing an arm a three times let's say you played an arm a three times and these are the rewards that you got in those three uh, times okay so then what will be my posterior based on this information i have to update uh, my prior right so what will be my posterior so i'm just uh, being a little uh, hand wavy and writing the pdf as uh, p but let's say let's write it as pdf let's say what is the probability that what is the true distribution right let's say this is my distribution about the arm a okay Okay. Yes, I mean, I have to fix some notation. So let's say after playing some time, this is the posterior that you have about arm um, A. So what 
would it be? It will be like, what is the probability that uh, you are nu equal to theta, given that you have seen this data? Okay. This is like the posterior. Okay. So before seeing any data, we have a uniform distribution. Now we have seen some data. Now we are asking what is the probability that my maybe I'll just be a little vague and write P instead of F. Uh, so so we can use a, a rule called Bayes rule to calculate this. So do you know what is Bayes rule? What is Bayes rule? What is probability of A intersection B if A and B are two events? Probability of A into P given A. Or what is the other way of writing this? Probability of B into A given B, right? So the Bayes rule essentially gives you the following. Probability of B given A will be probability of B into probability of A given B by probability of A. Like this is called Bayes rule. Okay. So we have to just apply this uh, rule to get our posterior distribution. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Right. So when I try to apply the full probability, it will look like this, right? We want what is the probability that nu equal to theta given the data. We are just using Bayes rule there. And if our true mean is equal to theta, if our true mean is equal to theta, what is the probability that you'll see this particular data one one zero? So if you if a Bernoulli arm, right? If you know that the true mean is theta, what is the, that means if the probability of coin toss falling into one is theta, what is the probability that you see one one zero in three tosses? It's a binomial distribution, right? Which is like three c two into theta square into one minus theta. Correct. This is the probability of seeing one one zero. It doesn't matter in which order they are, right? Yeah, right now we are not uh, assuming that these are in some particular order. Okay. Let's say they are in any order. And what is this thing? This is This is the prior distribution which we have. Before seeing the data, what is our belief on mu? Okay. What was our belief on mu before seeing the data? It's like if you assume this is a PDF. So that was like one. One everywhere, right? Between 0 and 1, we had a PDF 1. So by... What is the probability of seeing this data without conditioning on theta? No, this is what is the data? Like you understood the base rule. So this in this statement you want the what is the probability that mu equal to theta given the data, then you simply applied base rule, then it is giving you these terms. The first term meaning is if you know that the true mean is theta, what is the probability that you see this data? And the second term is probability of prior. If you don't know anything about the data, what do you think about P? Right? And the bottom one is, what is the probability of seeing this data if you don't know anything about theta? If you don't know anything about mu? If you don't know anything about mu, uh, how can we uh, calculate this probability? You don't know what that means. 
go to the dynamic domain, but you have to calculate the uh, probability of seeing this data. What you can do is you assume that the true mean is something and calculate this and then uh, average over all possible values of the true mean, right? Because you don't know the true mean, you just condition on some true mean and you calculate that probability and then average over all possible values of the true mean. So which is like, uh, it's just condition and uncondition it, okay? Which will be like this. It will be like probability of data given mu equal to theta into probability of uh, maybe, I'm just being very vague with respect to PDFs and integrals and summations. Okay. Sum over all possible theta. You don't know what the true means. You just have the theta and that is probability of the theta. And then you just have it according to your prior. Is this clear? So, if we do it properly, what will be our value? The numerator is 3c2 into theta square into 1 minus theta. Since these are PDFs, we have to integrate. So, integral theta belongs to 0 and 1. Like our theta can take values between 0 and 1, right? Integral between 0 to 1, 3c2 into theta square 1 minus theta because the first term is same as the this term. Right? Probability, if you condition on theta, this is the probability of seeing that data. In addition to that, what we have to do? We have to multiply with uh, the prior, which is nothing but 1 into d theta. Okay. If you calculate this probability, this 3c2 will get cancelled. What you'll get is theta square into 1 minus theta integral 0 to 1 theta square 1 minus theta d theta. This is what the posterior is. Okay. So this particular uh, distribution has some standard name. Any distribution of this form has a standard name, which is called a beta distribution. Okay. So beta distribution is the following. Probability of uh, if, uh, if H is beta distribution, which is parameterized by two values called alpha and beta, just like how you have for Gaussian mu and sigma, for beta distribution, there'll be two parameters called alpha and beta. And for the probability of its, uh, the PDF of uh, H is given by this. Like the PDF of uh, H is uh, given by this. By some constant which will make this integral to one. Okay. So a beta distribution will have this form. Uh, if the beta distribution is parameterized by alpha and beta, which are two parameters, and the distribution will be like this. If uh, if I want the distribution of beta of alpha comma beta, this will be my distribution. Okay. So then uh, that c is just a normalizing constant, so that the whole integral will become one and this is true for uh, zero less than or equal to it's less than or equal to one so the uh, beta distribution has the re region which is between zero and okay it can take only values between zero and one okay so according to this what is this uh, uh, equal to what are the according to that so it is beta with what parameters Beta with 3 and 2, right? This is just an ordinary function. And this is just an ordinary function. 
okay and uh, if you take beta 1 1 what will that be equal to if you take beta 1 comma 1 what distribution will it give us like it's 1 1 by c right it's constant everywhere so it's like the uniform distribution so what we are like here if you look at it our initial distribution, the prior distribution is beta 1 comma 1 because it's a uniform prior which we started with. And after getting two successes and one failure, what is our posterior? Our, after getting two successes and two failures, our posterior is, uh, uh, if I call it as uh, 1 plus number of successes comma 1 plus number of failures right if this is your prior your posterior will be like this if you okay Is this clear? If you have a beta distribution with this thing and you play some number of times that particular arm, if you observe this many substitutes and if you observe this the posterior will again a distribution with Is it clear to everyone? Because that's what we started with, right? We started with the beta 1 comma 1. We have seen two successes and one failure. That's what we got. Uh, you can uh, prove this carefully, but uh, I'm just giving you from that uh, example, I'm just uh, stating the general result. Okay. So, in, in some sense, if you have uh, beta alpha naught and beta naught instead of 1, comma 1, after some h successes and uh, y failures, you will have beta of. Uh, Alpha naught plus h and beta naught plus y. If h successes and y failures, you get this is true for any initial beta failures, you will just get a posterior equal to that. Okay. The main advantage of this is uh, you don't have to do any complicated integrals and all that because the posterior has a nice form. Like you don't have to do all this calculation. You have a nice form. If your prior is a beta and if your reward distribution is Bernoulli, then your posterior is also beta. Okay. This is true only if the reward distribution is Bernoulli distribution. That's why you're talking about number of successes and failures. Okay. So this, this kind of a relation is called conjugate uh, uh, prior. Uh, right, because uh, these are if a beta prior and a Bernoulli distribution is uh, a conjugate pair in the sense that if you take beta as prior and Bernoulli as your data distribution, your posterior will also be beta. So this will be true for some classes of distributions. For example, if you take your prior as a Gaussian distribution and your reward distribution is also Gaussian, your posterior will again be a Gaussian distribution. Okay, you can prove these kind of things. So generally, we uh, in machine learning also, you might have come across this. Uh, if someone has taken a basic machine learning course, you might have come across this concept called conjugate prayers. So we try to take these kind of distributions so that the calculation will be slightly easier. Okay. So now you know what is the Thomson sampling algorithm. So what can you tell me what will be Thomson sampling algorithm? Can you uh, tell me what will be the Thomson sampling algorithm if I want to write a pseudocode? 
Thompson sampling with the beta prayer and Bernoulli rewards. Okay, if you have beta prayer and Bernoulli rewards, what is Thompson sampling algorithm? Initially, we'll have a, a beta of let's say alpha naught. Let's say we have uh, alpha naught and let's say beta naught like it need not be a uniform distribution let's say you know something about that uh, arm already you can incorporate that in alpha naught and beta naught if you want as i said if you have some prior information either through your friends or someone who has played that game before you can have some prior information right so you can incorporate that in the beta prayer if you want if you don't know anything you can take alpha naught equal to one and beta naught equal to one if you know something you can take that whatever information you have, you can use that information to calculate alpha naught and beta naught. This is the prior. For every arm, you need uh, this. So you can think it as alpha naught of A and beta naught of A. Okay. So for every arm, you have some prior distribution. Okay, which is a beta distribution. Is this fine? Then what do we do at round t? At round t, what will we do? Well, at round t greater than or equal to one. Uh, at what will we do? What arm will play? These are the so what were we doing? We were sampling one uh, one sample from each of the arms, right? Every arm had a beta distribution. We'll sample one uh, realization from each of these beta distributions. And whichever realization is the highest, we play that particular arm, right? You remember, right? We had sampled H tilde, Y tilde, where H tilde is the sample from that belief of arm A, Y tilde was sample from the belief of arm B, let's say. We take those two and whichever is the highest, we play that particular arm. So what we have to do is sample for each arm. Uh, for each arm. Sample. Uh, sample theta tilde according to beta of alpha t minus 1 of a and beta t minus 1 of a. Okay. So this is the distribution that we have the true mean of arm a. So what we'll do is, uh, till t minus one, we'd have some belief about each arm. So you just sample one, uh, one uh, sample from each of those beta distributions. Okay, you just sample one realization from each of those distribution, each of those uh, uh, arms distributions, and then play arm. A of t equal to arg match over A. Theta tilde of A. Correct. You just sample one from each of those posterior distribution. And, and uh, you get uh, some uh, estimate of the true mean for each of those. You just play with the highest uh, thing. And then what do you have to do after this? So now you have played some particular arm. You have got some uh, reward for that particular arm. Based on that, you have to update the posterior of that particular arm which you have played. Correct? So update the posterior of arm A of T. Whatever you have played, you just update the posterior of that particular arm. Okay? So how will we update? 
based on the reward that we got. Okay, so in particular, your uh, it will become like this beta of. In particular, what we'll do is alpha t will become alpha t minus one of a plus. You have played arm a t, right? Only for that sam for that particular arm, the posterior will change. For other arms, we did not get any sample, right? Because we played one particular arm, we got one sample from that particular arm. For other arms, the posterior will not change. Only for that particular arm, AT, which we have played, the posterior will change like this. Indicator, let's say RT equal to 1. Okay, that looks fine, right? So if you get this up here, you have to do one. If you get this up here, you have to update the beta for that particular arm. For other arms, you will just not change anything. Okay, so this is the Thompson sampling algorithm. Are there any doubts in this algorithm? The algorithm is clear, right? If by default you can take these uh, prayers, so you take these prayers and you play arms, where you keep updating your beta distributions. So you keep getting one sample from your beta distributions and then play the term. Okay. Yeah, this is the Thompson sampling algorithm. And in the next class, we look at policy gradient uh, descent and contextual patterns. Thank you. Well, you can get some slight parts of that to arms.